Well, the auditor typically. I never know. He started. I know it typically. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Stop scrolling around. Commissioner Blaney. Here. Biggs. Here. Commissioner. Oh, what did I say? Brignitz. Barb. Uh, Barb. Here. <laughs> Commissioner Barb. Here. Councilman Brickner. Here. Councilman Stout. Here. Here. Councilman Graham. Here. Councilman Sims. Present. Councilman Bozak. Oh. Here. 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 Councilman Vasquez is uh, running a few. Yes. Did is our new um, appointment non-voting member on that list? I wasn't paying that close of attention. I actually didn't have it. Oh, okay. Tom Devine. <clears throat> Tom, Tom, what's his last name? Thomas Devine. Thomas Devine. He's not here, or I would just ask him. Do you know what his middle name is? He is. <laughs> Thomas, okay. he yeah, is Devine. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you missed all those years by being open. Okay. Now that we got that, um, we have approval of foundation minutes for November 20. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, reorganization. I'd like to nominate uh, Commissioner Laura Blaney. Second. 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 Jeez. Thank you. Third. <laughs> All those in favor, are there any other nominations? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, thank you. Um, next we have Vice President. I'd like to nominate uh, Councilman Andy Bozick. As Second. Well. Second. Any other nominations? All those in favor of Andy Bozick as Vice President, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, Andy Bozick is the Vice President. Under new business, we've got a resolution transferring foundation earnings the transfer is for five million six hundred thirty thousand five hundred and ninety-eight. Um, any discussion on this, Scott? Do you want to talk about that number? This represents the foundation losing number for twenty twenty-four. Motion to approve the five million six hundred thirty thousand dollars. Five. Second. Something five hundred six hundred and thirty thousand. Thank you. All right. Well, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion. Question for you. Yes, sir. What was our foundation transfer last year? Is this how much higher? Probably about two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Higher. Higher. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, and we have another resolution transferring the foundation earnings from the foundation holding fund to the foundation budget fund for the full amount of the 2024 approved budgeted amount. Motion to approve. I want to explain oh, real quick what this is. Okay. <laughs> um, this is when, at budget time, the council approved a certain number to budget. It's not the full 5630000 Um So that the money will move from the holding fund into the fund where it can be distributed as budgeted. Okay. All right. I have a motion. Did I have a second? Second. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And now it's time for the Capital Cities presentation. And I think you have better news than you did last time, right, Corey? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. So it's great to see everyone again. Uh, my name is Corey Waddell. I'm Capital Cities. Uh, for those of you in the book, we're actually going to start behind the tab. Um, following up on the screen, we're going to first cover our special project for the quarter, which is our annual look back on 2023 markets, some things that we're looking at for 2024. After that, I'll cover a brief flash report of our fourth quarter performance. Just given where we're at in the calendar right now, we don't have our full reporting uh, package together yet for the fourth quarter, but we'll be sure to follow up with that via email. 
So looking at the uh, review and outlook, uh, you can go ahead and flip to the next page. First, we're just going to look at some topics covering the uh, 2023 uh, macro environment. Go ahead and go to the next page. And then we'll look at some things that impacted the investment results. So um, here you get a timeline up at the top of the uh, events that happened in the markets, um, summarizing them up. Uh, a lot of them were interest rate hikes via the Federal Reserve monetary policy. Uh, but we also had a lot of various, uh, you know, just economic stories that also caused market volatility throughout the year. At the beginning of 2022, or at the end of 2022, we had 70% of e economists were expecting that we'd see a recession in 2023. Um, and while we did see, you know, some volatility here and there, uh, we didn't see that come to fruition. So um, the reality of the quote unquote soft landing that we've been hearing in, in market uh, becomes more of a reality. Um, economic indicators there in the bottom right that we're looking at that continue to kind of support this is unemployment holding in. Uh, we haven't seen it, it, it spike given the, the tighter monetary conditions. And we can also continue to see real GDP growth here in the U.S. On the next page, um, talking about the interest rate uh, environment for the uh, year. This is really what impacts fixed income results the most. Um, I want to draw your attention to a couple lines in this chart. And this is just a yield curve chart. So this shows you the different yields that different maturities of U.S. Treasuries are earning at any given moment in time. And so the orange dotted line, or the orange solid line, is where we ended the year at 2023. You can see short end interest rates above five and a half. Five and a half percent. This is all based off of where the Fed has risen, risen short-term interest rates. Um, interestingly enough, though, you can see as you go farther along the curve into 10 and 30-year interest rates, the orange and green lines are pretty much plotted on top of each other, meaning where we ended 2023 was exactly where we ended 2022. Uh, but you can see the dotted blue line, that's middle of October. And so you can see we did see rates rise quite a bit during the end of the year, or during the middle of the year, only to see them fall again at the end of the year. Um, all of this uh, to be said, this environment really played out well for all of your active income managers. On the next page, uh, page five, um, looking at the inflation story, which has obviously been driving you know, why we're talking about interest rates so much. Um, the Fed has had to raise interest rates to fight this inflation uh, story that we've had. Um, last year when we came and we were showing you this similar chart, um, we were showing you that this green chart of inflation and the blue chart of the Fed interest rates were starting to converge. And that's what they needed to do. And now they've actually crossed. Um, and we're seeing inflation, again, continue to come down. It's got a little sticky in the 3% range here. Uh, at the end of 2023, um, but we're starting to now hear the narrative that uh, we're not going to have to see interest rate this high for as long as we might have expected. So rate cuts potentially in 2024 um, here on the table. Page six is just a review of the quarter's uh, broad asset class performance. Um, really just a note here that throughout the year, we really had strong results through the equity markets, both the purple and um, uh, blue bars there. Um, third quarter was choppy, but then we really had a strong fourth quarter, not only in um, equity markets, but also in fixed income markets. You can see broad fixed income up almost 7% for just that one quarter. On the next page, you see how these results came out through the calendar year through broad uh, indices for different styles. So the very top row there is just broad U.S. stock. And if I draw your attention to the gray column, that's calendar year 2023. You see broad U.S. stocks up over 25% for the year. Very, very strong market for stocks um, during 2023. Um, you can see some stories that played out. Uh, larger cap stocks definitely were uh, better place to be than smaller cap stocks for the year. Um, also, domestic stocks versus international holdings performed better. Uh, 
bonds ended up performing strong given a, a, a rally to end the year. Um, they were up over five and a half percent for the year. And this is really now more of a normal return given the interest rate environment that we're seeing. You know, longer term interest rates are five percent range. And so um, we're starting to see <coughs> um, actually be a tool for um, investors to use. Other things to note on this page, just on longer term time periods, again, really strong returns, uh, you know, 10, 15 years on equity markets. Uh, but fixed income results have been a little bit muted now in longer periods. And this, again, is still on the back of that calendar year 2022, which really just drained away all of the long-term results. For <coughs> income. On page eight, um, this is just another theme that we saw play out in the equity markets during the year. Uh, the chart on the left is really interesting. And so it shows you the S&P 500 returns, but it's chopped up a couple different ways. The gray bar is just the S&P 500, so you see up 24% for the year. The green bar at the top is if you just had the top 10 stocks in it, what they were up for the year starting Jan 1, 62%. And then the other 490 is the blue bar. They were only up 8%. So you saw a lot of, lot of concentration. You can see it especially over in the uh, chart at the right, um, all of this to show you these are just the individual stocks within the 500. The larger the box, the larger the weight in the index. And you can see, you know, we, we used to talk about the FANG stocks. Now the acronym has changed a little bit. Now it's called the MAMA stocks. <laughs> but um, we've got Microsoft and Alphabet and Amazon. Um, Meta up almost 200 per, Meta was up almost, Meta or Facebook almost up 200% for the year. Um, and so the, the point being, those handful of stocks really drove predominantly the, the bulk of the stock market returns that we saw for the year. This really, really helped um, passive equity investors because you got to ride that whole wave. You, you owned all of those. Um, but we did see active equity managers have mixed performance because you're obviously not going to be holding every single one of those largest holdings in the, the S&P 500, depending on your strategy or um, you know, how you might be feeling. Page nine, um, looking ahead to 2024, um, lots of market themes that we're going to continue to monitor. Uh, inflation is obviously going to be a, a big story continually. Uh, I already mentioned interest rates. There's starting to be chatter that, you know, we're, uh, we might be pricing a couple interest rates cuts into uh, the markets for 2024. Um, you know, obviously following that Fed policy. Uh, on top of the markets, we continue to have some geopolitical unrest ac across the globe. Uh, obviously, here in the U.S., we have the presidential elections this year, which, you know, can affect the markets one way or another, but it will obviously be something that we're following. Um, and then, really, uh, all that to say is, um, you know, looking forward for that, Diversification still remains paramount when we're looking at these assets. Um, we'll do the full portfolio construction review here in April when we come back, um, where we look at the, the underlying asset mix, but we still think the underlying 55% equity, 45% uh, fixed income makes total sense. But we're also doing, on top of that, things like active and passive for exactly what I just talked about on the previous page. Uh, making sure we have different styles of fixed income. So being as diversified as, as possible. And then page 10, this is just a review of our fiduciary calendar for the year. Um, again, we're in the top left quadrant talking about uh, fourth quarter performance and the market environment. And then we'll have a, a, our normal fiduciary projects that we'll cover for you all uh, this calendar year. I already mentioned we'll look at portfolio construction in the spring. This is where we take a look at new uh, market expectations as it relates to return and risk. Um, make sure that still plays into the asset mix that, that we're recommending for these funds. Uh, we'll review the policy again in the fall and then make sure fees are in line again in the winter. Um, just as a reminder, this is um, just a draft. We want to make sure that we're doing whatever you'd like us to do. Um, so if there's ever a a switch up to this or ever a special project or a topic education wise, please let us know about that because uh, those are 
things that we'd like to bring to the table. Um, if you have time, we realize you all are busy in, in the agenda. Are there any questions before I switch gears and cover performance? All right. So then we'll flip back to the front page or behind the, uh, or behind the cover. The items for discussion on this, the next page, um, just our annual market review and then the, the item that you've already covered here, that annual spending calculation. Uh, we'll follow up with raising those, those funds from the portfolio. We can flip ahead to page uh, five, and we can see the flash report of where we ended fourth quarter. So you can see up at the top, we ended the period at 181 million, 159,147. As I mentioned, we did see a very strong fourth quarter, uh, the portfolio up almost 9% at 8.87%. And then that brought the one-year total for the portfolio to positive 14.27. So again, um, in a year that everyone was expecting recessions across the board, um, really strong performance. And it was across the board. Um, again, your passive equity was the strongest point. Um, your slight underperformance in the one-year time period is, is coming from your active equity managers. Um, one specifically that I'll call out is the AQR large cap defensive. So you can see there plus 9% relative to their index at 0.26. So that market concentration slide I showed you um, explains a, a ton of what happened with AQR. They won't hold a, a stock larger in their portfolio than a 2% weight. Um, so they always want to have at least 50 stocks, and it's more often that there's 70 or 80 in there. Um, so they're never going to hold a Apple at a 6% market weight. Um, and they also shy away from tech, and it's just part of their strategy. And so tech was the strongest place to be. Um, and so um, just to go to show this sort of performance c comes in and out of favor. Um, AQR was one of the strongest performers for the fund in 2022 when we were having some more challenging performance. Um, on page six, I wanted to let you know, actually all of your fixed income managers outpaced their benchmarks on the one year time period um, and performed um, or, and provided alpha uh, on the one year. So that was really good to show. Um, the other item I wanted to touch on was on the Wasatch Ultra Growth Fund. We mentioned this last quarter. It's on the previous page, page five. Um, this is a fund we put on watch list status because of their recent three-year number. Um, they had a, a knock it out of the park fourth quarter up almost 20% for the single quarter. Um, brought them up to being one of the best small cap managers for the year two. What we put them on watch list status for was their three-year number, which is still challenging. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not taking them off watch list status yet, um, but we couldn't have asked for a, a better quarter following, you know, what we came to the conclusion was that um, you know, we didn't want to sell what we thought might be the bottom for that fund. Um, so we'll continue to monitor that and provide updates quarter to quarter. Um, but so far, a uh, very strong rebound from Wasatch. <clears throat> then finally, I just wanted to note up at the top, um, again, it's been nice to see successful performance since inception. Um, you know, we've been able to uh, beat that evaluation benchmark and then also your 5% you know, performance target, which is that three and a quarter, quarter percent plus an inflation bill, um, that you try to target each year. Um, and we'll be coming up, I think, I believe on eight years in April that we'll have on that. Hard to believe. Yes. <laughs> Are there any questions? And as I mentioned earlier, this is obviously summarized. We'll have our full materials ready probably in a week and a half's time. We'll send that full material with all of our commentary on the performance um, via email. Just the, the, you said the AQR, I mean, that three year even, I mean, you're saying, I mean, it's a defensive investment so in the down market we'll do better but i mean three years what what year did you say that we were doing it was performing outperforming 2022 and so it it gets washed into 
the one year time period just because of you know how much it did trail uh, in 2023. Um, we don't have calendar year numbers in here to show you 2022 on its own. Um, but yes, I, I definitely hear you that the 2023 washed away the year. I, I was just pointing out the fact that um, more more the sense that that market concentration theme is one that we've definitely seen come and go, um, and it it really slammed them this year. And the um, I don't know. Did you mention the prospector? That one. It seems to be out underperforming also. On the one year. And the, yeah, and the one year. Yep. Yeah, um, Prospector, it had a really challenging, well, challenging relative fourth quarter you see there, and that was really the whole story for the performance. Um, again, it's it's more of a value-focused fund, and we saw such, and we're putting it next to a value benchmark, I, I realize that, um, but we saw such a strong tech rally in the fourth quarter um, that any tech company that shows up in the value stocks they're they're not in prospectors fund and again that's by design we, we want all those in wasatch um, so we've got some differing performance but um we're not we're not souring yet on prospector by any means all right thanks yep anyone else have questions Okay. Thank you. Thanks for that report. Is there anything that anyone would like Corey to address when he comes back for our next meeting in particular? Of course, we'll probably want to look at the watch list. You will have the watch list update. Um, we'll have the portfolio construction, as I mentioned, but then, yeah, if there was anything else. All right, we'll be and in you, touch. You can be in touch. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone have a nice evening. You Drive too. Safe. Drive safe. Um, so next up, we have the attorney's report. Do you have anything, Scott? I don't have anything to add. All right. Any other matter that may properly come before the board? We do have, before we do, public comment approval of claims. We've got Capital City's fourth quarter for 2023, which is 16,250, and the first quarter of 2024 which is also 16,250 for a total amount of 32,000. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, do we have any public comment? All right. And in that case, the meeting is adjourned. Oh, real quick, when do you guys want to meet? For a Meet every month if the report's going to look like this. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, usually we try to meet quarterly, so that would put us in April. Anybody like want to try to do the April council meeting date? Is that the 4th? It's the 23rd, right? Um, that would be the 23rd. Yeah. April 23rd, 5 o'clock. Sounds like a plan. Good. Sounds good. That's what we'll do. Now the meeting is really adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be here. That's all right. Perfect. Andy, Andy, Andy. Yep. You're not Andrew, Andy. You're Andy, Andy. <laughs>